Right, okay, today what I'm going to be doing is talking to YIT staff about uh, flint and stone tools and how to recognise stone tools which are humanly made from those which are just natural. And one of the reasons for this is that although people think a site like York is full of historic archaeology, and yes it is, but it also has a prehistory. And underneath the historic strata in York will be evidence for human activity in the local area during prehistoric times. Now what that means, of course, is that the vast majority of the finds that are left behind by prehistoric people for us to recover are going to be made of stone because they're organic materials, bone, leather, uh, uh, wood, things like that, just will not survive. So we're left with the stone tools. And for the archaeologist, stone tools are the most important type of artefact that we recover from this deep prehistoric time. So. I'm going to be talking to them about how they recognise different forms of flint, where it comes from, and how we actually manufacture tools out of flint, from cores through to flakes and blades, through to the types of retouched artefacts, and which of those occur at different periods of time, so that they can not only recognise humanly made flint, but also any chronologically diagnostic flint as well. So they can say, oh yes, this site is a Mesolithic site, or this site is a late Neolithic, early Bronze Age site from the types of flint which occur. So in terms of, of napping flint, uh, in terms of that, uh, what we have is that on an archaeological site you will often find a core which is the cobble which has had flint removed from it and is now being used to make flint flakes to make tools from. So, for example, <clears throat> as a prehistoric person, I would use my hammer stone <clears throat> and I would strike the top platform of the core and the flake would then come off on the underside at the side like that. This flake doesn't obviously come from this core, but the principle is, is the same. And it is then a question of looking at the features that we can see on the flake to tell that it has been humanly struck. So we have a flat platform, we have a bulge here which we call the bulb of percussion which you can see in thin section, we have ripple marks which are the pressure waves of the scar, flake scar as it comes off the, off the flint, and we have one or two other little telltale signs on here which tell us this is, this is a humanly struck um, artefact.